Let me take you back in time. 18 years ago. It was the year 1999. This is the year where I was born. After it, I saw a lot of images of war and terror. But at the same time, I saw a lot of love and compassion from my family and friends. They turned the images of war and terror into perspectives. However, I did radicalize. I'm not here to talk with you as the youngest consultant of this country, but as the young changemaker who still believe in the positive capacity of the human being. Because I see what's going wrong in our society. The last year, there was a lot of attacks in Brussels and a lot of different cities around the world. And we heard a lot of perspectives and opinions about those guys who created the attack. But what I didn't hear was how to avoid it. And why do those youngsters create the attack? So as a 16 years old boy, I was sitting on my bed and did some research about how and why do those youngsters who were older than me and where their mother's love becomes a life taker. That's the place where I created the cycle of radicalization. Yes, the cycle of radicalization. But to understand this definition better, we must all know what does radicalization mean in theory. Radicalization means, comes from the word redux. That's mean the root. So when you're against an existing system, I want to move the tree, you must move the root with it. In the history, we see a lot of radicalized persons that were heroes, like Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King Jr. There was also technological radicalization. Those people were, were against an existing technology and wanted to change it or develop it, like Elon Musk and Bill Gates. But those people took the positive side of radicalization, the positive way of radicalization. To make it clearer to you all, I can confirm that we all, the 100% that sit or stand in front of me, is or were one time radicalized. Because you all were one time against an existing system that you see in your own society. So to go back, so I want to talk about those individuals who were radicalized, but in a negative way. They become a terrorist. What's the reason behind it? So I took the cycle of radicalization, I define it with three words. Perspective, hope, and love. When someone loses his perspective in the future, and then his hope to be meaningful in the society. And as less the love that he needs, he will become a terrorist. And when we look deeper to the majority of those terrorists, we see that they have a history of delinquency and drug dealing. But then there was the outsider who gives them the hope the perspective and the love that they needed. Not us, the government, but them, the extremists. So to make it clear, I want to talk about with example of the letters of Salah Abdus Salam. He was one time the most searched terrorist in the world. He wrote three letters, one to his mother, one to his sister, and one to his fiancée. In these letters, he explained the reason why he became a terrorist. But for me, it was a clear evidence of him entering the cycle of radicalization. Firstly, we have perspective. When someone loses his perspective in the future, then he will be a rebel. He will be against the society where he lives in. 
You will enter then the jihad. Jihad is, from Islamic religious perspective, something that gives him some kind of restructuring his life to a better good, to be someone. Salah Abdul Salam wrote to his sister, move to a Muslim country so you can become someone in the future. So we see how Salah Abdul Salam didn't feel something. He didn't have a perspective to the future. Then we have hope. All of us who sit here, including me, need hope. Hope of being meaningful one day in the society. Hope of creating something, hope of a better future. But those who forget, or those who lose their perspective and purpose, will lose their hope in a better future. Salah Abdul Salam said to his mother, Mom, my brother who bumped himself up wasn't a suicide. It wasn't a suicide. He bumped himself up because he loved the people who was around him. And then we talk about those small Muslim community, small Muslim group. At least we have love. I don't talk about relationship, but love towards your government, love towards your environment, and love towards your society. Because that's what we all also need. Those terrorists, after that they lose their perspective and their hope, they lose their love towards all those stakeholders. So they enter the terrorists because they feel they're a small brotherhood, a small part of heroes who comes together. They call it a Muslim ummah. What mean? A Muslim community. So they can create their own community of jihadists who love each other. And all of them, all the individuals, lose their love and entering in this environment where everyone loves each other. I'm not here to justify the act of those terrorists. I'm here to avoid it. I'm here to give all those youngsters the tool to become meaningful in our society and to feel good in their self. So I was looking to myself in this, in this cycle of radicalization. We can all do the, this practice. Firstly, perspective. When I was 12, I wrote my own book about how I want to change the economic and politics. That was the time where I was radicalized. That was the time where people were around me and said, wow, you're only 12, 12 years old and you write your own book. After that, I was 16 years old. I started my own first company. I was supported by different projects like Boost and started KBC. They gave me a purpose to live, a perspective of being one day a successful man. Then hope. Everyone around me was saying, you will be the new Mark Zuckerberg. So <laughs> I had hope in the future. I was thinking, I am someone. I can be someone. I'm a part of this society. And then at last, we had love. Believe me, when you have the perspective and then the hope, you will get a lot of loves of the people around you. So I was filled up with love. So how? So what was the most important thing in this cycle of radicalization for me? It was talent, developing my talent. So how can I develop the talent of all those youngsters around me? I started with a project to build my own talent incubator. It's an incubator where the majority of talents is being represented and where youngsters can come and develop their talent to a professional level just to feel meaningful in the society. But I knew that I can't do it alone. I also knew that this talent incubator will not be in every street, in every country. It will be limited. So how can we bring talent development to everyone? And I knew that I can't do it alone. 
So I come with talent angels. What if we can bring in every house a talent angel who has a great talent that you want to share with someone that also believes has a talent but don't, but don't know it or don't know how to develop it? So what if in every house some talent angel can share his talent with the one next to him? Dear people, I know that I'm only 80 years old. I'm maybe not as professional as you all. Maybe some of you don't take me serious. Maybe some of you was already sleeping when I started. But the past two years was really difficult for me. Because I had this huge passion of changing and creating a meaningful tool for those youngsters. I was backing everyone to help those youngsters who were around me because I see the need that they need. So people, I beg you all, before it's too late for our generation and the generation after us, let us all be talent angels so we can give perspective to those youngsters, to give them hope in their own future and to be loved let us bring Charlotte and Mohammed together, not as lovers, not as lovers, but as talent mates. Please, let us share our talent.